accident in the kingdom of God. Therefore, Lord, we know that we're not here by accident. We're just praying that word that will do something within us, that sentence, that signal, that verse of scripture that will turn us around, give unto us in Jesus' name. And we're praying, Lord, that this convention will not be like uh, last year's convention. Like the conventions of past years, Lord, we pray there will be something new. There will be something different. There will be something you are going to impart, impute into our lives that will make us totally different in Jesus' name. Lord, when Saul left Samuel and he turned, he became another man. And we are praying, Lord, you will turn us to be another man. Another woman, another child, another boy, another girl. That Lord, something different from what we ever experience. You grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, not to settle down or see if we've got to the climax. As see we see what we'll ever see. But Lord, something new. Something different. Something greater, something higher than we've ever known. Grant unto every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's hear, Lord, with new ears, think with new minds, see with new eyes, that, Lord, will be able to have new experience and do new exploits. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And let's say, you can sit down, thank you very much. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, who for dry bones. We're going to read from verse 1 all through to verse 10. But I'm going to start just reading from verse 1 and then I'll go down to verse 10. We're going to make some comparison. After that comparison, then we'll see if we can read through verse 1. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of, full of what? Full of bones. You'll see here when we start the chapter that uh, what Ezekiel saw, he just saw bones, dry bones that he saw. Look at verse 2. And he caused me to pass by, by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very, what? Jump to verse 10. It says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet. What? An exceeding great army. As we look at those beginning verses and the final verse in verse 10, you want to ask yourself, where did they start? They started in the valley. They started as bones, and they started as dry, dead bones. And as you look at the end, you see, not bones, but you see a great army, an exceedingly great army. And then you're asking yourself, if you started in verse 1, what does it take to come to verse 10? And you, you're not just looking at Israel as a nation. You're not looking at Judah as those, the two favored tribes. You're looking at yourself because it says whatsoever things were written at full time. That is written in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. They are reaching for our learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. Am I reading something here about Israel? Yes. Am I reading something about Judah? Yes. But they're reaching for me. How can I move from what I see, verse 1, dry, dead bones, and then by the end of the convention, I'm not just saying, you know, dry bone like we started, because some people are just like that. No matter what program they go through, what convention they go through, what meetings they go through, and no matter how many preachers preach, where they were in verse 1, by the time they get to verse 10, which is the end of the convention time, they still remain like they were in verse 1. But as you look at the mighty change, and you look at the dramatic change here from just dry bones in the beginning verses to a great mighty army in verse 10, then you are asking, can we think about what they did? 
and how they did it, how they became, what they became. And just as I said before, that if you look at people ahead of you, and they go into a particular place where you want to get to, and they've gotten there, then you can say, if I take the steps they take, if I walk the path they, they walk, if I go through the stairs that they went through, then I'll be able to get to the same place. And so we're going to look at, you know, those, just those verses from verse 1 all through to verse 10. And we're going to see what it takes for when we say there is hope for dry bones. Before I go back to verse 1, and let's look at verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Behold, they say, our bones are dried. That's in verse 1. And then they said in that uh, verse 11, it says, our hope is what? It's lost. There are people that give up. And you know, you won't be buried until you give up the ghost. And it's only when you give up hope. Nobody is going to touch your life and nobody is going to forget about you and nobody is going to write you off until you give up. The people gave up. They said, our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, in verse 12, prophesy and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves. He said, I will, I will. And you know, sometimes when you feel nothing else can be done. And I cannot make any progress anymore. And, and sometimes the people around us, I think some of us will talk uh, too fast and we talk too quickly and uh, we talk too soon. And we write up people who are struggling. Once you get to verse 1, you get to verse 2 and see that these are bones, they are dead and they are dried. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you, are, you have trained yourself to always pass negative comment. And you want to tell them, do you still have hope? I want to tell you that this situation is very, very bad. And uh, the way we talk, we bury them before they, de they die. And you want to be careful that during this time of the convention, if you cannot say something good to somebody, then shut up. Let them sort out themselves. If you cannot say something good, something encouraging, something uplifting, something that will make the person feel there is hope. I can do something. I can still become something. Then shut up. Don't even talk to their friends. And don't talk to their relatives. Don't talk to anybody else. Don't talk to them. Because some of us, the way we talk and the way we, we want to comment about Mr. A. And we're not, we don't want to talk to him directly. Therefore, we go to uh, Mr. J. And then we say, J, have you seen A for some time? Not really. Well, he said, never do well. He cannot make it and this and that. Because you are sure that J is going to tell A that this is what they said about you. And some of those people, it's only what we put in their computer and their program. That's what they walk by. But if you can just restrain yourself at this time, you have a lot of things on your own plate by yourself the things you need to do and the things you need to turn around in your life that we don't worry about a b or c or d or e or f or about anybody just about me and as i you know i'm standing here i'm thinking about myself and uh, the you know programs ahead of me and the challenges ahead of me and the things i need to do the things i need to plan that i don't have time thinking about other people and talking about other people if you just say what do i desire what am I inquiring? What do I want to acquire? In which way do I want to pass part to be able to do and to be able to have what I want to have? Who do I want to inspire in my life? And how do I want to retire from the crowd so I can refire? You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, 
we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.